Hello, it's Joey, and today I'm making double folded pockets from a junk mail envelope, just like this. So these have two pockets. There's a pocket on the right hand side here, and there's also a little pocket on the left hand side up here. On the outside, they're covered with beautiful papers. Here's another example. I've also added a closure here, which means that I can fold them over, fold down the flap and put the string around it, and they go quite flat, which means they're great for junk journals. They're also perfect if you want to post them and send them as happy mail. On the inside, I had a lot of fun adding collage. So I collaged the pocket, a collage behind it, I've collaged around the window and I've made a little image with a mushroom on the left hand side here, just behind that window. There's lots of space on the right hand side pocket for adding goodies, so they're definitely great for happy mail. And these are also, I think, a little bit different, so if you feel like doing something different but you also love collage, then I think these would be perfect for you. I have today, as I usually do, some process steps to make life easy. So feel free to take a screenshot of these and I'll refer to them as we go through. And don't forget to subscribe if you love making projects like these and playing with paper. Hit the notification bell and let's have a bit of fun today. So for making pockets like these, as well as the main junk mail envelope, I have quite a few supplies to use today and I thought it'd be helpful if I laid them out around me and just did a very quick tour of all those supplies on my desk and then you can set yours up and have a really great time making these too. So in addition to that junk mail envelope, I have on the right hand side of me here, readily available, a nice selection of scrap papers. And these are gonna be perfect for collaging on the front of the double pocket. And if you wanted to, you could also collage on the back. So I've used some beautiful papers from Louise Heinzel and they're very texture looking. So there's an awful lot of interest and I thought they were perfect. But you don't have to have digitals to do this. You can definitely just use collage on the back as well. So I have a couple of tubs of my scraps. It's going to be good to use those up. And I've set out some things over here. So I've got some of my washes in black. So I have a black and white tub distinct from my various other washi tapes. These are some of my favourites at the moment. I've got some sort of planet style wide brown ones and I've got some in a range of greens here and also I've got a box here of some beautiful autumnal shades, some oranges. I have some ephemera in a box at the back there. Mostly that is Andrea Allen, so a mixture of sentiments and some little images. I have some larger scraps here. So I've got some beautiful papers from Victoria Designs. I might use those on the inside of the pocket and some other pieces of scrap. So mostly these are scraps and book pages that I'm using today. As we come around to the main part of my desk, obviously critical on my lovely warm lights, I have a few other bits of ephemera. I have a little box of beautiful brass-like brads here. So I'm going to use one of those as the container the element on the closure and then I have some larger papers over here. I put a collaged piece of paper, a book page I made the other day. I could always rip that up and use that. And then I've got some I've got some music paper and I've got some other book pages. So nothing particularly complicated or expensive and probably one of my best projects for using up scraps and having a go at reducing some of the stuff we have on our desk. So those are the items. Let's have a go at cutting up that junk mail envelope and making the structure of this double pocket. The first thing I'm going to do is take a junk mail envelope and cut it in two down the middle. So I need to make a decision about where to cut it. And I want these pockets, so when I cut it in two, I'm going to make a right hand side pocket and a left hand side. I want the left hand side, which will have the window, to be about three millimetres wider than the right hand side piece. So we're cutting a large junk mail envelope into two pieces and we're going to divide it into two. So I want to make a mark for cutting point and for this one if I were to cut it in absolutely in two I would get 
not a lot of space to the right hand side and I want to have a little bit more than this. I probably want about a centimetre to the right. So I'll make a mark at about one centimetre to the right hand side of that window which also means it's going to deliver a right hand side that's slightly not as wide as the one on the left. So let me get my trimmer. I hope I'm making some sense. So I want a nice tidy cut. So I'll go that way I think. Put this underneath and go about I'll go about there. So I will have enough space to the right of the window to do the gluing that I want to do. And I'll have a pocket on the left hand side of my double pocket which is slightly wider than the one on the right so let's just test that out and that works so I've got a little bit of extra here and here on the larger left hand pocket so now we have our pieces I can start with the collage and I'm going to collage around the left hand side piece so I'll put the right hand side piece on the side let's just take that out of the way and I'll begin by decorating behind the window and on the front and that means what I need to do is open this up. So I'm going to take a craft knife and just open this up so that I can get inside it. Let's do this safely, I'll turn it over. Do We can get inside make a lovely picture and then we'll glue it together. There's no sewing on this one so if you don't like sewing or you don't want to sew then this is a good project and I think I will begin with the image here and I decided that it would be quite cute to have some mushrooms behind the window. I had a little play recently in my glue book with some mushrooms and I just had well I just had so much fun and I thought they were rather cute so I thought I would carry on with the mushroom theme I've got some mushrooms and there's another nice one and really the rest of the collage behind here can just be anything you like so it's time to play with whatever you fancy on the back here let's just get some down I'm just diving into some of my papers here I think this is the stage where we're on a warm-up we get going don't we and our confidence rises and and then it feels easier so let's get some first pieces down, just a little bit of painty paper. I want to make sure that everything behind this window is collaged, but I don't need to go all the way to the edge. So I can be a little bit approximate when I glue these pieces down. Probably best at this stage to use a dry glue, I think, so that the envelope doesn't warp it's quite thin um, although maybe I've got accuracy with my wet one let's see what I do want to do is make a bit of an image so I want this to sit my little mushroom to sit in the right place behind the window so let's just do some filling in with some old book pages and I do think it works particularly well when we have these very yellow pieces of book page and you could use the most tiny scraps as well. Probably need to check every now and again whether, let's see if I can use this, whether I am going inside or outside the view of that window. So that is the tip, just keep closing that and seeing where you're up to because I've just put a piece down and I can't even see it through the window. Go a bit higher up, there we go. So I know that that's where the boundary is for my collage. I've got the most tiny pieces in here, this is such a good project for, for adding and filling in. And even if I've got pieces that are a similar colour, where the font is different it still works so I'm adding those two just keep going a bit of brown paper always helpful and I'll try and do my collage with putting glue in the middle which gives me more opportunity to do my under over technique and that layering effect really does help 
have a little look at what we did on the others. So I've got lots of lovely papers on here. I think I'll use a little bit of paper with some text on it. I think that can join the party. I'm starting to feel like I'm coming out of first gear. Maybe we're in second gear. How are you feeling? Are you crafting along? I do love collage. Okay. Looking better. It's very quick because there isn't really a lot of space to collage behind here. Shall we have a little label? Well, I've clearly used half of that one. That looks good. That can go on there. No waste here, Mum. Put that behind. A nice tatty edge on it. Let's see if that fits well. I think I'll bring it down. I've just got the text, actually. I think that's beautiful. I just need a little bit filling in at the top. We're doing well. I don't want to repeat, so I'm looking for some sort of paper. Let's have a bit of French ephemera that's different. So I want variety if possible. That can go on there. Let's go back to my dryer glue. Let's help it as much as possible. Right, so have we collaged behind the window? Yes, so we've got a mat behind the window. So I'm going to add a little toadstool and that also needs to be visible enough but with a tiny bit of overlap behind the edge. I like to just have a bit of the outside of the paper covering up so it looks like it's hidden behind. There's something secret and magical going on. Well, I think so anyway. So that can go in there. Is that in about the right place? Maybe up a little bit. Up a little bit. Obviously what you want is to find little images that are proportionate to the size of your window. So have a look at the size of the window on your envelope and then maybe go hunting in your books for images that work. Perfect. I think what I will do is dig in my little tub of washi tapes and see what I've got that might augment a nice little crosshatch one here. a little bit of that. I think that will show behind the window, yeah. And I also feel like I want a bit of colour. I think the creative juices are starting to flow. There we go, a bit of vertical. Very good. But it definitely needs something small and black as a feature behind that window. Ta-da! Time for the picket fence. Picket fence washi, absolutely perfect. I have not too much, but a little bit of that. So once we've done this image, once we've created it and sealed around, we're not going to be able to really change the picture. So let's get to a point where we're super happy with it. I think that looks better. I feel like I want just a little bit of something on the left hand side. I'm going to give a bit more strength of colour from my green washi. I think green is a good, ooh that's a bit wonky. Green is a great colour to complement my red toadstool. So what we will do, because that's stuck and fiddly, is I will just go over it with another little piece. That's fine. So I've got my image created behind a window. So now what I can do is just very quickly go around with some of the scraps and collage around it. There's no particular order of events. Maybe I'll start at the bottom with some lovely French ephemera paper. That can go on there. And for speed, I think I will use my wet glue at the moment. I'm going just in the middle of the piece of paper. I can go to the bottom on some of that. But I'm not going all the way to the edge. Let's get that on there. Just build up here, maybe walk around it. So, I like to cover up edges if they are a little bit straight. I can do a bit with that. I've got a bit of very nice, it's got a gold, it's a bit of a gold fleck in this. It's green core, so that works well. 
give me just a bit there. Definitely want some some brown paper on this. I think this is actually part of an old envelope. Glue on the back of that. And again, this will be a fairly quick process. That's good. That's good. If it does overlap the window, we can just tear a little bit off, and I probably don't want as much of that anyway. Quite like that. Have a bit of text. Yeah, a bit of text on there. No real rules. You will like the colour on the back as well. So just work around to reduce it. I want to see a bit more of this. Just work around and fill in the gaps really. So shall we have a bit of a bit of half of a label that I've clearly torn in half. It can go on there. Quite like that. I've got some material, I might use that at the top. And I've got quite a bit of red behind the window, so why don't we have a bit of red on a label? I can go on there, I'll break up a bit of this extra brown packaging paper that's behind. So very quick to do the bottom there. I think what I'll add, a few details to carry them through from the window behind. So a bit more of that washi, it's also holding that down, let's just glue that down. Maybe a bit of picket fence as well. Double it up, quite like that. I'm going to travel up here and do the top. I think I will have a few more of these numbers for just a thin strip. Tear that off. Any of the elements, the bits of paper that go over the side, we can just trim off later. So don't worry about having to be super accurate as we are tearing and sticking. That's really nice, isn't it? Oh, I like that. I can go on there. A bit of my dry glue. So bring that up. And also what I like to do is make sure I do slightly overlap the paper and the acetate of the window so that we just take away that blunt edge. So that can go on the side. But just a bit of decoration there. I like the colour and I like the digits on that. Then I'm going to bring it over here. So I will add a bit of colour. Should we add some material? Just a little bit. And I didn't take the glue all the way to the edge on this so I can tuck that under. That's nice. I could still leave some of the envelope paper showing. I think that will be fine too but it is very white so maybe let's go for a bit of coverage with the brown and I can go over the top of this. That will be fine there. And I'll make that go over the paper and the acetate meeting point. That's a good base. In fact I can yeah, that's great for covering up quite a lot of my white. Don't want too much of the same, so let's dig into the box. Nice bit of... Now what would you do with a piece of paper like that if you didn't do some collage? Do you do something else with your paper scraps? Let me know in a comment down below. I'm feeling really good about at least trying to use them, although I have to say the pace of reduction isn't so great. If you have any super techniques, do let me know. Let's go in a different tub, see if something different happens. Instant magic. A little bit of Victoria Designs paper. In fact, I think I might bring that in here. A bit of my liquid glue. And I've got quite a lot of upright here. So I am going to have a little bit of left to right, some horizontal to break up this piece here and I might bring a little bit of that down there. So 
So maybe some here with some, maybe some filling in with the ubiquitous labels. And I'm going to stick to black and white if I can for some of the labels because I don't want too many clashy colours. I'm trying to stick to that sort of red, black and cream palette with a little bit of green. I think I'll have a number if I've got one. What have I got in my tub? I've got some numbers at the front. Numbers are always great. There's one. I think we'll have, have a number. Let's put him on the junction. Go there. Definitely want to fill in this. Does it work? No, too busy with another label. Bit more book page, perfect. Let's take a little bit off the top. Every single one of these is going to be different as well, isn't it? Because we are, we can't create a formula for every piece of paper. I think it's just getting the feel going by eye. Let's colour this in. Can that tuck underneath? Yes, it can. So that can go under there. And I'm going to cover up the straight line. So I need something on top of that. Might have a bit more text type paper. Have some of this. Get rid of the straight end. Bring it together and I'll tuck that. Oh, yes, I will tuck it underneath. So we're almost done on covering up. I'll just have a little bit across the top here to fill in that white. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, how naughty. Bright and happy colours doesn't always need to be vintage looking. That can go there and I think I'll just have a little bit of something across the top. Maybe something quite plain. A little bit more of our packing paper. Perfect. It's just in a slightly different colour so I haven't got the same things sitting next to each other. So that can go across there. Tuck it under. And I'll have a look at the process steps in a second, just so we can see where we're at. But I think we're doing really, really well. Actually, what I will do is add just a little piece from this washi, which is tremendous. It's got some gorgeous oak leaves on, which look perfect. I think that can go on there. It's a bit see-through. And... Again, because I had some of this behind the window, I am going to include this in something on the front. Okay, so we have our image behind and some lovely scraps to make a collage on the front. So we've done step two, we've collaged the left hand side piece, we've decorated behind the window and we've done the front. So what we can do is move on to making the right hand side pocket which is also incredibly easy just from the other piece from our envelope. So I'm going to make a pocket like this on the right hand side and the first thing we do with our other piece is open it up with a craft knife. So I'm going to open up this left hand side here, not the bottom, just the left hand side and I only want to open up part of it. So I'm going to create pocket about just over a third height here compared with the whole of this length. So I'm going to take my craft knife and just go down by eye to about that point. So more than halfway but not a lot more than that. And I'm going to use all of this paper and just do folding so that this pocket can be as strong as possible. So the first thing I want to do is turn it round and fold this back on itself and keep it as flush and neat as possible 
and then take, turn it round again, take this piece and fold it up. If you can see, we're creating a pocket that we can fold back. And I will just give that a little touch of glue to hold that down. So we're using all of the paper to give it more robustness. Now if I folded that back up, all I've got is a pocket here with a flap. So what I'm going to do is just fold this in on itself. So if you open up, in fact the first thing I'll do is make sure that this is really creased because that will help, just do that. And then tuck it back in, just tuck it in so it goes back on itself. Like that. There we go. You might find that you get a little bit of overhang here. If you do, just trim it off, flatten that down, and now what I'll do is I'll go in with a glue stick, a little bit of glue, and just put a touch on the on the pocket here to hold down that flap. If I'd added glue earlier it would have made it really difficult to tuck it in on itself. So now we've got a pocket here to tuck things in and the other thing I'm going to do is glue down this top flap. So you can see that if this was messy, if we'd opened the envelope in a more rough way and made a bit of a tatty mess with the flap, it doesn't really matter because I'm not using that. So that will fold down. So now we've got the elements of a right hand side pocket, space to just tuck things into and something that we can decorate. So I'm going to decorate this now with a little bit more collage and some lovely papers. I've got a few little bits and bobs of papers to use on the right hand side and something that I thought I would do to make life a little bit easier is to use some of these larger images. These are absolutely gorgeous. I used this one on the right hand side on the other pocket. These are from Victoria Designs and I just think they're absolutely beautiful. I like this bird one too but I think I'm going to have a go with this as my main image. And one little tip or trick I've been playing with is if your image isn't big enough to really fill the whole of the pocket then what we can still do is a little bit of jiggery pokery with some extra pieces of paper. So I'm going to add this you see, it doesn't, if I put it all the way to the bottom, it doesn't reach the top. So I'm folding it where I retain most of the image that I want for the bottom pocket. I'll tear that off and stick that on. I'll go mostly in, which will go all the way to the top, but not go all the way to the edges as usual. And we'll stick that down. And what I can see is it isn't quite deep enough to go to the bottom so I can collage over there and on here if I put it immediately behind I've got quite a gap at the front so I'm actually going to move it up and then add a little bit of paper underneath so we're basically extending our image to position it where we want if it's not big enough in the first place because if I added just a just a strip of neutral paper at the bottom of this the eye doesn't really see the gap. So that can go on there. So I've extended the image now to be something a little bit bigger. And I'll take, I'll take a strip of something and I'm just going to tuck that in here. So let's have a go with that. All will make sense when it's down. It's just a little trick when some of our images are not the right size to cover what we want. But that can go just behind the pocket and I want it to go quite deep in so I'm not really losing much of the image. It's just something I've been playing at doing. So now we have an image that is more looking like the size that we want for the pocket that we have. And all I'll do is now just get work around here with some other elements. So what have I got around here? I think I want something quite neutral. I'm going to look in my book pages. So my mighty pouch of goodness. Let's see if it can come to the rescue. I've got a dictionary page. Maybe a page about plants. You can't go wrong with a page about plants, can you? 
So let's just work around here a little bit. I don't mind that this is on its side. Take off a bit of the extra, make it a bit flatter. I think that can go on there. Just want a little bit really along the edge. So. Oh, it just looks so good when you combine a dictionary page with some of that that vintage image. I'll trim across after because it's popping over the edge. That's okay. I'm just choosing how much of this I want to cover up. Maybe a bit of my deeper orangey paper here and that can probably tuck inside. Just a little bit of that. The, the warmth of this paper actually is beautiful. Let's see what we can do with that. And I quite like the edge here to be made a bit tatty too. That's overlapping a little bit. So quick this one. Shall we add a bit? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. Decisions. I think I like that but there's too much colour in it. I've got colour here and here. I need to bring it down a bit. Let's go for some neutrals. Often the answer. Bring that down there. That's better. That's better. Just go by feel. Just whatever you think. What does it feel like it should be? That's better. A little bit of label. That's better. And maybe a bit more label up here. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. It's too much, too heavy, too big. We're allowed to say no. Oh, there's a tiny one. That's better. A bit more balanced. Go on there. So the layering carries on. And I found this tiny one popping out. So I think that can go on too. It obviously wants to. So I've got a little trio there. So now I'll just work around here starts to speed up doesn't it? I don't want the same again. I'll go back for my ephemera paper. I think that would work well but I don't want as much. So a little bit of too much script appearing if we go for too much of this. I think what I'll want to do is break it up with some washi. Across the top of here, when we add paper on the back of this, I have found it's useful to fold down spare. So I'm not too worried about this extra gap at the top. I'm going to fill that in with paper on the back, which means that I'm pretty much there on the front. I think I'm just going to add something interesting at the top here. So there's blue here in the lovely flower, so I'll carry that on too. Let's do that with dry glue wherever we can. And now we're on the closing stages of collaging this piece. I can use my dryer glue because I don't need to tuck underneath. I can go all over it. This is less accurate than that. I've got a nice point on there. So how are we doing? I think I'll add a tiny bit of my scribbly washi. So this is stationary pal. Um, my obsession on washi is growing. I think it's so helpful for adding extra detail. I don't want to cover up the text. So I want it on a junction like that. Do we need just a little bit of something up here? Maybe something horizontal. Damaged. That's a bit humorous, isn't it? Because it's not. That can go down there. It's so not damaged. It's just... There we go. And we're covering up a bit of the the white in the torn paper, which is perfect. I think I like that as it is. What do you think? And in terms of checkpoint on our process, we were working on step three, so we opened up the pocket, we folded down the flap to make that pocket and we've glued it and we have collaged that right hand side pocket. So we're actually already on step number five, which is to make and add a spine strengthener. 
So the spine strengthener is just an extra piece of paper about this size. I'll give you the dimensions. And what I have done is added it to this one. I made a couple of samples and I've definitely learned from making my first one. The spine strengthener sits between the two pockets and gives it just a little bit more durability from the folding that will no doubt happen. So you could make these without doing this step. On this one it didn't have a spine strengthener and although it folds it's working only on the decorative piece of paper on the back of the two pockets. So if you want to make this just a little bit more durable a spine strengthener will help. I also think it means that we can cover up a bit of the white that would otherwise show through from the window envelope behind. So for aesthetic reasons and strength reasons this is what I am going to have a go at doing now. And all we need is a piece of paper that is a few centimetres wide but roughly the height of these two pockets and the height that is on the left hand side without that flap. So I'm going to add an extra piece of paper just behind each of these two pockets roughly the height and I'm going to position the two pockets about two millimetres away from each other which gives us just a bit more ease of rotation as this comes over especially useful if you want to tuck things into the pocket here and that's one of the reasons why we wanted this side to be not as wide as the left because as we fold it over we still want to have a little bit more of a gap on the left. So all I'm going to do is add a bit of glue to my roughly torn spine strengthener and I think I'll do it with wet glue so that I can position it more easily. Add a bit of glue and then I'm going to put the pockets on top and shuffle them around a bit, move them around as needed to get them into the right place. In fact what I should have done to make life easy just make a crease in this. Not the best idea to put your glue on first, Joey. Never mind. So make a crease, that will help. Let's just open it up. Give ourselves a top up of glue. You see, we don't get everything right. But nearly right is good enough. I'll position this one. In fact, I should also trim off my excess now so that I can see where the bottom of the pocket is. Why don't we use that and just add a bit more strength to our pocket by folding it over. So I'll trim off, oh we're getting in a mess, I'll trim off at the side and I'll fold that up, the spare from our collaging and then I'm just going to sit that on there and I can see where the fold is in the paper and I'm positioning in the spine I'm positioning the pocket to be just about a millimetre or so to the right of it. You don't need much but it will just help with the rotation and it will give this pocket some strength. Now that that one's on, equally I think I'll just trim off my excess on this one so that I can see the edge haven't glued this down yet so this is exactly as we just collaged it and I'm going to position that on my spine too and I'll see just a bit of the spine showing through but because it's patterned paper I think that's absolutely fine. Let's add a bit more glue, it's dried up a bit. And I'll put that on. And it doesn't matter that I've got a bit spare at the top. It's absolutely fine, we'll work with that. So those two are now in position, attached to each other. And it's going to make it really easy as we fold this over. I'll still have a bit of extra space on the left here. But there's going to be plenty of room for tucking things in and still rotating and folding it and holding it with our closure. And now we've added our spine strengthener, so it's just glued on the back here. I want to add a hole on the back of the right hand side pocket, let's just show you, so that we've got somewhere to put our brad through when we've decorated the back with beautiful papers. So the key for this is to just make a mark and put a hole 
through here before we decorate the outside. So it's something to remember. We are on step six, adding a brad and a closure to the back of the right hand side pocket. So I want it to be within the pocket so that I don't see the brad flaps when they come through and I want it to be in the middle of here. So I can see where my pocket finishes. I'll go a little bit further down. And I'm just going to measure to be roughly in the middle of the whole of the entirety of the width of this. So I want it to, be, to look like it's in the middle of the whole of this. So I measure the whole of this and halve it, not just the back piece. That's how I want it to look. That's the aesthetic I'm after. That's about 12 centimetres, I'll make a mark at about six. And that hole there, I'll just make a hole with my needle, will be hidden by the front of this pocket. Let's just put, very easy, I'm just putting a needle through like that. And we're going to use that when we've decorated the outside. So now what I'm going to do is move on to step seven and make a top flap on the left hand side which is basically extending what we've already got on the left hand side pocket and making a flap that's strong enough to hold an eyelet and then we'll decorate it with beautiful papers. So let's have a go at that. Now I actually, I actually haven't glued down this top flap yet. So what I will do, in fact that was glue down top flap, we should have done step one, that's what that was referring to. I'm going to glue down this and then add my own in the right place. So we're not using the flap that came with the envelope. I am going to keep it on and glue it down because again it adds a little bit more strength to the pocket. What I want to do is make my own flap by bringing up the back piece here. And I've found that nothing more than a book page is what we need for something like this. So I showed you this pile of things earlier. Should we do it with music paper? I also think large text worked very well. Let's have a go with that one. Let's have a go with that. So I need to tear this down to be the width of my front piece. I want as much of that text as possible. So first thing I'll do is just rip off on the side here, rip off the excess where there isn't any text. And then I'll just measure up how wide this is. Make a mark. Fold it and tear it. Absolute perfection in measurements isn't needed at this stage. Do that. So I don't want it to be seen in the window. So I will take off as much as I need. I know I can take that much off. And I'm going to glue that on. So this just needs to be as wide as this pocket. Like that. And not visible when we shut the window. And now I have an extra extension for my flap. I can just decide how big I really want that to be. And I'm going to fold it first and not absolutely butting up to the top of this pocket. I'm going to fold it with a little bit of extra. So that will be my flap, which means looking at it, I probably want it to go to about there I'll just tear off the top and again I'm just going to try and do it where the text finishes. And our flap will be made of two pieces of paper so there'll be this piece that we can see and then an extra piece on the back. So I've got what I need there for the flap so what we'll have is the right hand side will come over the flap will come down and the closure will be just here. So that's another step done. And what I can do now is just trim around and glue down all of these edges where I want to. I'm just going to glue those down. 
and I'm just looking for any other edges that I need to trim. I'm going to trim just a little bit here peeping through, so that was from our spine. Trim that off, in fact again, if I can, anything I can, I'm going to fold back and glue down. So we are on the home straight, what it's time to do is decorate the back, it's looking a little bit ugly. And for this what I chose to do was just use some of my lovely papers. So of course what you can do is carry on with your collage. But if you want to use some papers then ones to choose are designs which fit landscape as opposed to portrait. I think this would work beautifully. Gorgeous old script. I've got some Louise Heinzel papers here and I think I might use one of these. I like these because of the the mix of patterns and elements within the design. It looks like you've already collaged it. So that would work beautifully. Might have a go with that. That one's gorgeous too, isn't it? So these will be on her Etsy shop if you're interested in taking a look at those. I also found one from a new kit from Andrea Allen and I think that's stunning too. In fact, I might have a go at using some of these little bugs in the November glue book page. If you're interested in coming along with me and collaging a page in a glue book then do join me early November and also let me know if you think bugs would be a, a lovely thing to do to play with at collaging a glue book page. So it's no more than taking a piece of pattern paper and gluing this on top. So I am going to, let's just fold that in and make ourselves a bit tidier. I'm going to add some glue, maybe we need our strong dry glue, and just position that down in the corner. So plenty of glue at this stage. And I'm going to go all the way over. So I've glued my little extras down here, that will add more robustness. Up here, my flap that extends beyond the top of the pocket going on the back of the spine strengthener and then also bringing it up this flap and I think this flap is probably deeper than the piece of paper but that's okay we can just trim it off and maybe think about where you want to position your your pocket so that you pick up the piece of pattern that you really like I think I'm going to go down in that corner so my piece of paper is bigger than my pocket I'm going to just position that down there and I get the part of the pattern that I really like and press that down. Fantastic. And what do our instructions say? So point eight is about having put down that pattern paper, trimming around the entire pocket and gluing edges down. So let's just trim and take off what we don't need. Now, I said that I wanted this piece to just fold over a bit, so I must remember not to trim right to the edge here. I think I'll start by trimming along this edge here. So let's just cut that down. So I'm going along the edge of the flap and then down the side. I'll cut off any excess. Go through that. Not too difficult. And then I'm going to cut down the edge of my flap, but not all the way. And something I like to do at this point, fold over and rip it. So I don't want a straight line. And then if I just put a little cut there, I can add glue to this top piece, magically fold it over and just bring that whole of the design together. So I think what I will do is add the brad on the back of the right hand side. So I'll go back to my needle and just poke my needle through the hole that we'd already made. And this is why it's easier. It's easy, far easier to find the hole that we've already made than to make a new one. So I'll put my needle through that hole and I'm going to add a brad, one brass type brad, not a very big one. So I have my brad, 
and I'm going to make a hole in one of my little closures again with my needle I've chosen a nice green one I like making these Brad goes through and that's going to go through the hole I'll use a trick of you can't see this but I'm spreading out the little legs and then I'm just going to cover those legs with a little bit of washi which we won't see because it's quite far down so the positioning was quite useful one two I need an eyelet and some thread in here so what I will do is fold that over and use my ruler to just get the eyelet in the right place maybe about that far in go about there I'll just make a hole there maybe a rose gold given the colours clamp that on and at this stage I'm just going to glue down the sides of the left hand pocket leaving the top piece open this side and up here, so along the bottom and up the side that goes down there and I'll add a bit of thread to my eyelet and one, two, I don't want this to be too long, two and one for the pot double pocket from junk mail made from scraps with collage. Hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and I hope to see you soon.